let's go ahead and do a quick introduction. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Paul David Thompson. I live in Little Rock, Arkansas. I used to be a corporate drone and I used real estate as a way, a way to escape my day job. I first started as a single family investor and now I'm jumping more into the commercial side. Uh, with my own uh, real estate investment fund and projects. And Simon and I are good buddies, met at several conferences over time and just became good friends and started started talking about passive investing and all the questions that people have. And so we started the Passive Investment Show to help you learn more about investing in uh, passive investments and how it can kind of really change your life. And we have a guest here today that I think has, I think we were talking in the green room here 25 projects is two under contract and she has gone full she's exited or she's gone full cycle we'll explain what that means over in nine of those 25 projects so simon do want you to do a quick intro tell me how you know kim and then let's uh we'll just go through our conversations with kim well um so i've known kim pretty much all my life she's my sister and she's also an investor and she's I, I honestly, she's been an undercover investor until I didn't know any of this until about a month or two ago. What? When she shared with me, like how much she's done. Now I brought, I introduced her to real estate back in 2018. I said, Hey, you should start looking into real estate. And she has gone, uh, you know, cause I've always thought she was, you know, she had a full-time job, she, uh, works for the government and, um, and then recently she, we got more involved in talking about real estate and she's shared with me because she's like undercover. Everything she does is very undercover. And she shared how much she, she's done so far. I was like, what? How much have you done? <laughs> so so then um, that's like, hey, we need to get, because we already have a passive investing show uh, with, with Paul and Simon. So she, she does only passive investing. Well, recently she's done a couple of active deals but uh, up to until a couple of months ago, she's been just exclusive, exclusively passive and she's done an amazing, amazing job. So I thought it would have been awesome if we brought her into the show and she gets to share her experiences uh, with our audience because, uh, you know, from just the, the, what she's done in the last few years is just phenomenal. So uh, please, you know, I want to introduce Kimberly Mai. Um, uh, so welcome her on board, guys. All right. Hey. So Hi, my name is Kimberly. And um, I mean, I, I've been working with the private sector for a while and be prior to joining the federal position. And I learned about, you know, the job market going up and down, working force reduce, reductions, you know, Therefore, I look for a stable position. Um, fortunately, I land a great job and happy to serve the public. But because, you know, due to the uh, moderate salary, so I have to start the side hurdles so, uh, to supplement my additional income. So it's like Simon was saying, he introduced me to a real estate 2018 and um, I start looking into it you know um, at first I was like prior to that I just like have uh, invest into the single family but this was really really hard um, with working <clears throat> uh, full-time job and um, you know the renting and everything it's just really big mistake because you know the uh, the renter call you whenever everything's broke and you have to come and try to uh, fix it or hire somebody to fix it it's really hard so uh, when i heard simon was saying you know the multifamily so i was just started out like mid 2018 and uh, until now I have like, you know, going to the uh, 26th of them for passive. Um, what else do you want me to continue? Well, okay, so I uh, just want to ask you a few questions that you don't mind. And uh, I think this would be good. Uh, some of these questions will be good for uh, the audience. So 
you, you know, you mentioned that, yeah, of course, most of us probably know working for the government, you're not compensated very well. You have a very modest job uh, or, or salary, but how are you able to come up with the funds? And, you know, can you share some of your creative ways? Because you mentioned that before, how were you able to come with, uh, uh, up with the funds to, to invest? Well, you know, at first I was, I sold my rental house and I started investing in the first multifamily apartment to see, you know, to have a feeling, you know, how it works. Can, and can then you share I, like how much, how much would, uh, when you sold your house, how much did you come up with and, 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 and before, you know, and how much do you invest into the multifamily? The first deal I, I, I did was 50,000. 50,000, okay. Because I was kind of still scared. <laughs> Didn't know how it, it starts. So I just start with 50,000. And then I saw the cash flow but I was so lucky at that, at that one, like the first three months, they gave me like a thousand dollar every quarter. So I feel like, wow, that's easy, easier than rental, um, you know, single family rental. So uh, I didn't have to do any work and just sit there and read the report only. Monthly, they report to us and say, hey, you know, that's how they were doing. And they just send it directly into my um, account, deposit a thousand every every quarter for fifty thousand of investment. So I like the idea, so I start, you know, um, borrow from my four one k, and then ah, that's right. Four k, you borrow against your four one k. What else? And then I out of funds, so I spend up. Uh, starting taking out the um, home equity home equity loans, and then later on when the interest rate went down to like two point something, I uh, refinance with cash out of my house, so I get some of equity and put in more into um, apartment investing. So uh, that's how I did it, and you know from working and then I know that I can um, make more money into in by investing in the apartment. I uh, start saving up and uh, with the car flow and saving from work and then I just do do one by one. Whenever I have some fun, I just put it. Um, it's enough for, you know, one deal that I, I uh, invest. So did you uh, borrow from your TSP 401k or did you uh, actually take money out of it as a distribution? Do you know? Um, I borrow, I can borrow up to 50,000 yep. and then um, they just deduct uh, monthly, I mean quarterly. Yeah. You, you pay, uh, you pay it back. Um, yeah. You pay it yeah, back from over five paycheck. years. Yeah. Yeah. They deduct from your paycheck. Um, I don't remember exactly the month. Probably every two weeks or something like that, depending yeah, every, on how I chose it. Yeah. Every paycheck, yeah. Yeah, so that I did. And so I can take that 50000 put another deal. And then up to like, I don't know, 10 deals. And then I get some cash flows. So I increase to 75 or 100 you know, for one deal. So that's how I did it. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you don't mind sharing, I know we've talked uh, offline about this, but like, you know, if you don't mind sharing some of the returns and how quickly you were able to um, exit the property and how, what kind of returns are, were you getting? Well, um, fortunately that uh, during the last two, three years, you know, the, the market went up and, um, I exit uh, within like two and a half to three years out of the property that I invest so far. And the return, some of them like about 18, some of them like over 20% per, per year. So average out is around 20%. Wow. It's an annualized return, 20% return? Yes. Nice. Nice. Yeah, um, some of them like 25, 30, but you know, some was less. So that's kind of average it out, you know. Right. Now you did, not all the deals went uh, well. There's, I think you said one or two deals that didn't 
didn't do so hot, right? Yeah, like two of them that I um, invested one sponsor that didn't make as much like I want. I like I like it to, but uh, it was okay, you know, like from seven to ten percent per year. Um, but uh, you know, we cannot win every every deal, you know, just average it out. Yeah. That, that's I mean, that are the only two deal that I have that because he was here and then he had to um, think that deal was in Houston. He cannot be there all the time. And plus that was a small deal. So we learned that do not do the small deal because you don't, um, you cannot hire a management company. So you do it your own and you are not there all the time. That is a big mistake. Right. That, good, good advice. So meaning like um, if the property is too small, they can't have on-site, on-site uh, management. Uh, is that what you're referring to? Yes. All right. Okay, great. That's, that's really good to know. Um, okay. And, and these projects that we're talking about, let's zoom out a second. Uh, these are apartment complexes that another investor, which is referred to as a sponsor, has found, gotten under contract, uh, raised a some money, and part of their money raise for this is finding investors like Kim or people like here on this call who have cash to put into the deal. So they're raising money to be able to manage this apartment complex, buy and manage this apartment complex. And uh, Kim would be referred to as the limited partner or the LP for short. And the like uh, say Simon and, and I decided to, to do a project somewhere in Texas and we would buy the buy or agreed to buy an apartment complex. It was like, hey, do you guys want to come in with this? We'll do the work, but you need to be the cash investor and we agree to pay you a certain amount. That's the the scenario we're talking about here. When we say that Kim has done 25 projects like that, we, she's invested in 25 different projects like I just described. Right. And, and what just to further uh, piggyback on what um, Paul is saying is a lot of the projects that we do are are bigger projects. So uh, Paul and I won't be able to come up with that kind of money by ourselves. But yeah. If we if we raise the money, we pull we put money into a pool. So someone like Kimberly and more people like Kimberly would come in and invest in that pool so that that we, we then we'll have enough money to take down a bigger project because it's it's so advantageous to do a bigger project. And when we say bigger project, like 150 units or more, because it will, um, it, it allow us, you know, just to uh, allow us to scale. There's economies um, of scale when you get more units like that versus right. 150 single family units that'd be hard to find. Or like she was saying, if it was just 40 units, it's kind of hard to have an on-site property manager and a leasing agent for a project that's small. So this is why 150 is often a common number for a good size project. Yeah. So lately we've been getting involved in uh, the, some of these deals that are, um, you know, they're, they're bigger in size that, because it's easier to scale. So, um, AJ had a question here. What's the the exit time for each project? And generally speaking, it depends on the project. But we'll ask Kim on these twenty five that you've done. You've gone full cycle, meaning you've gotten paid out everything uh, for nine of those. On average, what's the timeline on these? From two to three years. And that wow. seems they, fast, right? Yeah, That's they fast. projected like three to five, but yeah. in two years they make like. 50 to 60 percent uh what they projected and they think it's a good time to exit and they did exit so that's, if they I exit, think it's smart yeah yeah exit out 25 percent within two years that's 25 percent each year right and so, plus that as an investor if we invest we get a bonus depreciation that is really helped to offset the tax and reduce the tax from the W-2 income. So when you exit each time, 
you get that bonus depreciation. The more you invest, the more tax you can reduce, which is you may pay very little or no tax. Yeah. So and that's a really important distinction that I'll make sure everybody here understands. So let's say a round example. Um, yeah, we'll cover about the the, the recuperation, uh, AJ. Um, so let's say she put in a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, the project had depreciation to share. So what that does is it passes through to her investment, and there's this calculation that's done to basically get that depreciation, accelerate the depreciation, and pass it through to investors, and that offsets her um, tax basis that year. It basically, it kicks the can down the road. Now, what AJ says is, uh, but when you exit, what about uh, kind of recouping and having to pay for those taxes? What What was your experience, Kim, on those nine that you got some depreciation on when you got paid out? What happened? Uh, which, like, I invest one after another, like okay. every six months or a year. Yep. So one that I get well, exit, I get some capital gain. I offset with the one that I just invest in a few months ago because as long as you invest within that year, you can use that um, depreciation for that property to your capital gain that right. you sell this year. Right. Same year, yes. Yeah. Right. So, so you're, all you're doing is you're, you're kicking the can down the road, but if you continue to in, invest new capital, then you can, you continue to kick that same can down the road, assuming that the next projects have depreciation to pass through. Not all projects do that. Right. Good questions, guys. Yeah, good question. Um, so uh, can you, I know, you know, we, we don't ever want to advertise that, you know, that everything is good because they're, they're all not always uh, good. Um, so Kimberly, can you share some challenges that you've encountered? Well, um, the challenge, the most challenges that I have was, you know, family members that didn't really believe in me and um, they didn't think that invest in multifamily, you know, is a, a good thing, is very risky and is fraud. So um, it's really hard, really hard for me. You know, um, so besides besides uh, the family member, is there any other challenges that you encountered? I, just, I, I want you to be able to share some of the the, the goods, but also the bad stuff uh, about it so that our audience will know, so, you know, some of the things that, you know, maybe they're encountering in their life and how are you able to overcome these challenges so that it can help them overcome some of their challenges? Well, the, 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 the other challenges is financially because, you know, you have to save up enough. Minimum is 50000 is really challenging. But because I do many deals, so I get, um, uh, cash flow and then I also try different ways you know it's I don't tell people to go out and do the same thing what I did but I was taking risk that I even pull out my credit card to to finish the deal and then turn around to get cash flow and pay it back you know and I don't wow. I don't recommend that people doing that <laughs> I shared, man, you are, you have a lot of guts. I'll tell you that because uh, I wouldn't recommend that people do that, but hey, you, you did it at the right time and it paid off for you. Uh, but yeah, you have some guts. That's, um, that's pretty crazy, but that, that's awesome. That's good to hear though. It's really painful, you know, but you know, if you borrow 5%, do you, you get 15, 20% back? Why not? Right. Wow. That's very creative. There you go. Um, yeah. I think that's interesting uh, because that's something that I often talk to people about is to take your a financial stock of what you have. And so she had some cash. She had a 401k or TSP from her employer that she had access to borrow against. 
and then credit cards. And, you know, there could be a lines of credit against your business, lines of credit against your, your home equity. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of different ways you can get access to ca capital. Um, you can borrow against your life insurance, lots of different options. And we're not giving financial advice here. What we're saying is this is an example of Kim taking stock of her situation and making an informed decision based on her risk profile. So I think a lot of people are limited, have are limited in realizing what their options are. And um, Kim you is can not. also invest into your IOA account. You self directed IRA. IRA. Yes. Yeah. 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 Have you have you done that, Kim? A self directed IRA. I, I did not do that yet, but I know Jen. She's on the line. She done that. Maybe she can share how she did it. Yeah, Jen Hone uh, is on here. Sounds like maybe she has. Maybe she'll be our next guest. Yeah. <laughs> she can talk about her um, passive investments and. Um, with her uh, IRA. Yeah. Right. And so for those of you who don't know, uh, you, you have the option of rolling your IRA over into what they call a self-directed custodian that allows you to invest in alternative assets. Uh, if you're in Texas, Quest Trust Company is a very commonly used uh, custodian. Uh, I use Equity Trust um, and there's, there's several of them out there and uh, they're not vetting the, in the investment. They're just allowing you to, to self-direct the investment through your IRA into qualified projects that don't create any sort of tax implications to you. Right, right. Uh, AJ has another question. He said, how did you find so many projects one after another? And that's a very good question, AJ. Um, Kim, you wanna share that information? Yes, at first I joined um, Brad Sumrock, that is the uh, apartment investor education program. So I, went there and uh, connect with many, many um, sponsor. And um, they start send me, you know, like 10 uh, apartment due every week. And I start analyze it and pick whatever the best at that moment and then invest in one. And then I continue doing that, even though I didn't have money, I still continue analyze to study each one of them and see um, different sponsor do a little bit different. So I just kind of note it and then learn from it and then, you know, take it from there and pick the best one. And so what, it, what do you like about uh, um, when you say the best one, what, a, what is it about a project or a sponsor that you consider to be a good one? Well, I, I look like um, they, because most most of the invest, most of the sponsor that I invest with from Brad Sumrock that I learned, um, the program that he was saying like the average uh, holding from three to five years and the pro project uh, income is from 80 to 100%. So I was looking, you know, read everything and, you know, uh, whatever they do to um, uh, fix up to make it better. Like when they, they bought the apartment, they um, have, you know, um, put in the, the, the fund to fix up the apartment, like pain or put in a new fixer, new counter or do a, a lot of um, fixing ups to, to raise up the, the, um, the property value. And I read into that and see what, what kind of project they're looking for. What, what do they try to do? And it sounds good, you know, like nowadays everybody like to uh, smart um, system in the house, you know, um, I forgot what it was called, but uh, uh, they try to uh, promote like water, change out the toilet, the uh, sour head, whatever to to conserve the water to make you know um, less uses of water. So all different yeah. projects, you know, they do cover parking to help the uh, um, tenants to you know to cover uh, to park under the cover. And we can make like maybe, you know, $20, $25 extra or they can um, 
uh, put in new uh, carpet or something like that to, to add up, you know, to, to help the uh, apartment look better for the, um, the people who live there. And, so I have um, another question that popped up here, Kim, thank you for sharing. Um, Ebony asked, um, let's say somebody has uh, 10K saved up. Uh, would that be enough to invest in one of these projects? Um, I don't know about different sponsors or requesting the minimums uh, are different. Yeah. I so far that I see this minimum 50,000. Yeah. But um, I know one one sponsor that they really want to help the new um, couple that just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get out of school, just get a new job. So for them to learn, they accept, you know, smaller than 50K. Mm -hmm. But, you know, case by case, that, that depend on the sponsor. Right. It depends on the sponsor or the fund. Uh, so my, I think... What my experience has been similar to Kim. Most sponsors that that the circles that we run in, fifty is the minimum. Sometimes as high as a hundred. Yep. Uh, but there are what they call Class A uh, um, projects, uh, or I, I'm sorry, Reg A projects that um, basically they're crowdfunding, and some of those can have a element that allows people with a smaller amount to invest in. So you have to do some research on those sponsors and typically their funds um, that you're investing in kind of like a real estate investment fund. Um, Ebony, that might be an option for you. And you're welcome. Make sure that we're not giving investment advice here. We're not uh, professionals. We're just talking about our experiences. And so you have some, you're armed with ammunition so you can go and do some research on your own. Yeah, I agree. Good, good job, Paul. Uh, and, um, and Kimberly, I have a, a couple more questions. Okay. So, you know, you've you've been you've started investing. You've been doing this for five six years now passively. Um, but if you had to start all over again, what would be some of the things that you would do differently so that you you know you can either speed up your process or or if you could have done it better? Can you share with our audience, please? Well, if I have to do all over again, I would. Um invest much earlier as younger age because I didn't know this, you know, until like five years ago. So, you know, and I put my money in stocks and, you know, stock went up and down and losing value and all that. So if I knew this, I would, you know, start maybe 20 years earlier. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Most of the projects that you have exited has been pretty pretty lucrative so yeah um but so let's say you know um for, for for our audience and stuff like that what what advice would you share with someone that is either um on the fence about uh investing passively or um you know they're even thinking about investing in, in real estate what advice would you have for them well um I made everybody have a different feeling about it and, um, you know, start investing for the first deal and then enjoy the cash flow then keep adding one, you know, one after another, whenever you see the, the, the next opportunity and, you know, think big, be creative and most importantly, have some fun, you know, to analyze it and pick and choose which one you like. Right. Now, now I'm going to preface this, okay, because Kimberly joined a mastermind with uh, Brad Shimrock. So it's a, a network with a lot of sponsors in there. And there's also a, a lot of passive investors. So these deals are presented to her, these opportunities presented to her all the time. Like she said, 10 to 15 deals sent to her emails every week. So she's exposed to these deals. So that's where she's gotten all those uh, opportunities. Um, if, and, and because they belong to this, this network, um, these people have, they, um, they have to uphold their reputation. So when you're out there investing, if you don't know the sponsor, uh, very well, 
just make sure you do, do your due diligence and you um, uh, find out, you know, uh, who these people are because you're, in, you know, you're investing um, money into them. So, um, you know, just make sure, just make sure they're rep reputable. Okay. So, um, cool. Uh, any other, any other like creative, I, I'd love to hear some of the creative ways that you've, you've invested. So what are some of the, any, any other creative ways that you've, uh, you've thrown together you, that you can think of? Well, um, I, I just cannot think any other creative way, but you know, it's another creative way. Maybe you can partner with somebody and put together and, you know, like, Maybe the person that was asking, they have 10,000, maybe they can put in with their um, family member, you know, to yeah. add up to, 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 to add up, it goes 50,000. So right. you make one deal and you learn together. That, that's a good, that's a good one. I think uh, there was a question earlier about uh, if she, uh, this person had 10,000, how would they be able to invest um, a lot? So some of these deals have a minimum of like 50,000. So if you know you, if you get into that network, you can probably partner with someone to come up with the 50,000 to invest. Um, and, and some sponsor may make an exception to, to go less. So those are, but you just gotta surround yourself with the, the, the right uh, type of people, so. Yep, yep. yep. Cool. Um, I think somebody asking about the um, 1031 exchange. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you know if 1031 exchange is possible in a syndication like this? Yes, there, there, there is some sponsor that they are um, willing to do 1031 exchange, but you have to work with them ahead of time so that, because it involves some paperwork and, you know, some drafting of the um, uh, lawyer, you know, they have to do the paperwork to exchange it from one property to another. So there, so you know, I've been uh, exposed to a lot of the, uh, these um, 1031s. Uh, there's a process. Um, it's called a tenant in common that um, a sponsor would have to do, and they have to create. Uh, their attorneys have to create documents to make sure that because a 1031, you you have to own or hold title or at in least, the same entity. But, yeah, in the same entity. So. Um, there's a process of doing it. Uh, so the answer is yes. Can it be done? Yes. Is there a process? Yes. And typically there's a minimum amount that they take because it, to, it, you know, there's a lot of attorney fees that, that are involved. So to answer your question, yes, you can. Yeah, because they have to be on title. Like the only way it would work is if what the name of what you sold it from was a was on title along with the, the sponsor's entity would and tenants in common would be the only way it would work right right yeah yep. which is complicated so they're not going to do that for for just a few thousand dollars like they're they're, they're going to want probably hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars for that the the, the smallest amount i've ever, i've seen someone take for a um 10 uh, uh, 1031 is uh five hundred thousand. yeah no someone surprised. was willing to do it the, typically it's a, uh typically i've seen it's a million to two or million, higher but yeah, or higher. Yeah. So the answer um, is yes, the, but there, there's, you know, there's a lot of cost involved with it. So. I think, uh, Kim, you may have been uh, jumping on AJ's question. Uh, uh, AJ asked, um, did you start being a sponsor? Do, do you know that? <laughs> yes. Uh, in the future, if we have another deal, we will sponsor. Okay. So, yeah, she's open to being a sponsor. Yeah. Um, do you create an LLC or do you individually on these investments? Do y'all understand AJ's question? Yes, I, I did create an LLC. Oh, for, so you're investing from an LLC into these projects. Do you do yes. an LLC per project or just one LLC? I just use one LLC. Uh, it's overall gotcha. investing. But if as a sponsor, we need to create. Right you know, yeah. every yeah. Um, individual for each uh, property. Right. Right. For okay. So protection. Right. So just a little bit of context for those who may not understand. Um, the sponsor is the person who found the deal, raised the money, is doing all the work. 
uh, typically they have a dedicated entity for the apartment name. And the question I think AJ was asking um, is when you're investing as a passive limited partner, did you create an LLC or do it individually? And Kim's answer was they that she created an LLC for all of her investments across as a limited partner across all of these projects. Uh, so this is, that's impressive. That's a good way to run a little business um, because you would also get all the, all the expenses that you have legitimately running through your life. That's a business expense, then goes through the LLC as well. So that makes a lot of sense. Right. Because um, we, we like go look for the apartment, check it out. Um, we went to learn, you know, the um, events to network with sponsor. Um, you can write off. Mm -hmm. Ebony, are you on Instagram? I'm sorry. Ebony asks if Kim is on Instagram. No, I, I do not. She's she's not an IG. She's, she's no. no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She's not in social media at all. So good. Well, it, uh, you mentioned that you, that she does this kind of um you know you know incognito almost like she's like the the stealth investor. Hey, um, I did not know th th all of this until see, like recently. Hey, She's I didn't even know that you guys were low. siblings. Like, I, I, I mean, I was like, hey, Kim's going to come on here and I tell about all this amazing investment she's done. It's, it's your sister. You didn't even tell me. Uh, yeah. I didn't you, want to you know that, the surprise. And you know that I work for the government and they do not like us to be on the social media. So that's why I uh. do not. Gotcha. Do you still work for the government, Kim? Yes. I I can retire if I like to, but I love my job because uh, I really um, like the service that I um, work, you know, and help other people. And same thing with this uh, investment uh, apartment. It's really um, rewarding that we are part of the community to invest, pick up, uh, fix up the apartment to be nicer, you know, for people to call home and helping other people, you know. So I, I like to do that. Yeah, it's nice to have a job you like. Yes. Okay, so maybe we'll have um, five more minutes here, you think, Simon? So um, I think you have a question. Anybody else, while, you're, while we're thinking, what other questions do you have? Drop in the, in, in the uh, Simon, or drop in the message and go ahead, and, uh, Simon, go ahead. So yeah, there, there's some uh, questions here. Ivan asked, you know, find the property, set up LLC, form LLC. I, I wouldn't, my answer would be, I can answer that. I wouldn't get too caught up on all of that. Um, the, the key is if you have the funds to invest, um, you know, someone like myself, I, we have deals all the time. Actually, we, we have some deals right now, but they are not, um, they're not 506 C meaning like, uh, I can't advertise those. Um, and we have to have prior relationships before I can present those to you. Um, so, you know, once you register for this, this, um, this uh, webinar, um, we'll reach out to you, we'll talk to you, we'll build a relationship, and then I can present some of these deals to you guys, okay? So th that's what Paul and I do. We have, we have deals all the time. Um, uh, when, when and, and the deals that we have right now are 506C, so we really can't talk about it. Uh, but for 506C, which is, there's one coming down the pipeline uh, pretty soon here, uh, we can do all the advertising we want uh, on it. And that, that should be coming in, in the next um, uh, two to four weeks. So that um, it, it's already under contract. It's going through due diligence now. Once we clear, we have clearance, then we're, we can um, we can start advertising those. So um, yeah, uh, definitely um, we can, we'll send out some emails and, and let you know, Ivan. So. Mm, okay, Jenny, so the reason he, he's asking, he's a, pro, he's a project maybe. All right. And, and, and Ivan, um, to set up an LLC, it takes you like one to two days to do uh, very fast. So those are, are, you know, that's very quick to do. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Okay. Don't get caught up in all that. What state is, uh, it, in, is it in Ivan? What state? South Carolina. Oh, so okay, usually South. the LLC for the project are, are 
for the property is in the state that the state is in. And so each state has their own process. Like uh, Texas is a little bit slow. Um, like in Delaware, like you can do it yourself, like in one day. Um, and I'm not sure about South Carolina. Yeah, but I, that's I, that, that that that's an attorney question. They, they they can cut through that stuff fast. It's not a problem. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you get a lot of these uh, uh, investors. They they set up their um, their LLC in in either Vegas, La, uh, Nevada. I'm sorry, Nevada, Wyoming, Delaware. Those are the main three states that you you get the uh, the most protection. But like like I said, uh, you know, Paul and I were not attorneys. Uh, uh -huh. You may want to check with an attorney on that. Uh, uh, we're not CPAs either, but we're, we're just sharing with you guys our experience, what people, what investors do most of the times when they set up the LLC. So, yeah. Anything else, Simon? Or are we wrapping up? I, I, I think uh, Ivan has another question. He said, uh, yes, property is not under contract yet a hotel. Or, I guess you're, you're communicating with us that you were, you got a property going, Ivan? But he's the he's um, negotiating on it. It's a hotel in South Carolina. Oh, okay. Well, good luck, Ivan. You know, hopefully you get it. Those are those are nice uh, projects to have. You're welcome. All right, guys. Um, well, you know, thank you, Kimberly, for uh, joining us. Uh, uh, you gave us a lot of nuggets, a lot of creative ways how you were able to get into deals and uh, and uh, invest passively. So thank you for, for sharing that, uh, your experience with our audience. I uh, just wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight. And uh, Paul, thank you for, for uh, always giving uh, our audience a lot of good goodies and nuggets. You bet, uh, we'll send you the replay for this. And this is also being streamed on live, on live on Facebook. So if you don't wanna watch, uh, if you miss pieces of it, you can go back and watch it on, on, on my Facebook page. And then we'll be out here next week again. Looking forward to seeing y'all. Well, thank you All for right. inviting me. All thank right, you, Kim. Thank Thanks you. for coming out. Yeah, yeah. Have a nice evening, guys. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Good night, everybody. Good night.